welcome back to Amoeba Classes, my dear students. If you are watching this video, that means you have already watched the first part of the video. This video will be the second part. In the last lecture, we have already discussed about the structure of chromosome as well as the structure of DNA. We have also seen the different types of chromosomes based on the position of the centromere. We have also discussed about some definition, what is haploid, what is diploid, what are homologous chromosomes, etc, etc. Today we will be moving a little bit further. So let's switch to the scope of syllabus. Let's see what's written over there and we'll discuss further. So in the last class, in the lecture one, we have already discussed this whole topic, the structure of chromosomes, everything we have discussed. And along with that, we have all also discussed the definition of homologous chromosomes. Today, we will be continuing with cell cycle and cell division, okay? For cell division, we will be today discussing about interface and in interface, there is G1, S, G2 phase. And in the third video, I will be continuing with the mitotic phase in detail. So today's lecture will be totally based on interface and along with that I will be explaining you more basic things about chromosomes, about haploid, diploid, somatic cell, germinal cell and many other things. Okay, so let's begin. The total number of chromosomes in each cell, how many are there? 46 and in pairs, how many it will be? 23 pairs, right? Now, out of these 23 pairs, these chromosomes are divided into two categories. One of the category is called autosomes, okay, what it is called autosomes and the another category is called allosomes, okay, what it is called allosomes, okay, allosomes. Now, what are autosomes? Out of these 23 pairs, the 22 pairs of chromosomes these are termed as autosomes and the remaining one pair and that one pair is what basically the sex chromosomes right so these sex chromosomes are also called as allosomes and these 22 pairs are also called as autosomes now these 22 pairs if we talk about what is the uh, what is basically 22 pairs it means 44 that means 44 chromosome and one pair if we compare in both male and female and in the last class we have already discussed that this mean the male and this symbol means female okay so in the male if it is sex chromosome it is represented by xy and if it is a female it will be represented by x and x okay so if we talk about the chromosomes in male what will be the chromosomes 44 plus x y okay this is plus not multiply and in females it will be 44 plus x x so see we are getting how many 46 44 45 46 44 45 46 so this is how in the male and the female the chromosomes are arranged or it is like this in this way now now if we talk about the organisms okay so if we talk about the organisms organisms contain basically two types of cells one of the type is somatic and another is germinal okay talking about the germinal cells germinal cells are two types of cells basically those are a sperm and over okay in the whole body if we look in the male okay male body they have the germinal cell or the sex cells as sperm and the females have what ova so in a human body there are two types of germinal cell if it is male is sperm if it is female ova and all the other cells not the sperm and ova but all the other cells all the remaining cells come into the category of somatic cell that means whether it is a skin cell whether it is a lung cell whether it is a liver cell whether it is a digestive gland cell whatever the cell it is it will be considered in the category of somatic but if it is sperm or if it is ova it will always come under the category of germinal cells 
now see talking about the cell division what is basically cell division it is a simple process by which the cell divide but actually it's not that simple <laughs> i mean to say that it's not actually simple but it's a type of division in which the cell divides now uh, there are basically many types by which the cell can divide but in your class 10th there are two types one is the mitosis type of cell division another one is the meiosis type of cell division okay <clears throat> mitosis and meiosis this mitosis generally takes place where in the somatic cells and the meiosis takes place in the germinal cells understood that means if we talk about our skin right when you were a child and at that time when you were playing or got hurt by anything and your skin starts to bleed right so what happen after one month or two month your skin repaired by itself right and it is not lacerated again the blood is not coming out why because the place where you got hurt on the skin the cells over there did the mitotic division and they continue to repair and replace repair and replace and they continue to form new skin cells and your skin got healed right in the same way in our whole body wherever there is a wear and tear of any cell for that cell the cell division starts by the process of mitosis and that part of the body gets repaired but if we talk about meiosis it takes place in the germinal cells and what are the two germinal cells we have already studied right now is sperm and the ova that means they are the germinal cells they are the sex cells they are the gametes and this sperm and ova contains the genetic information which is passed from one generation to another so for these uh gametes this is sperm and ova exclusively meiosis takes place and for the somatic cell mitotic type of cell division takes place okay so i guess this was the simple thing now let's learn a little bit more i hope you already remember about diploid and haploid okay let me take your test right now if we talk about diploid if i say that the organism contains 5000 chromosome total number of chromosome is 5000 what will be the diploid value of that organism i'm giving you 5 seconds to guess okay the total number of chromosomes is how many 5000 what will be it its diploid value so 1 2 3 4 and 5 so let's see the correct answer see the diploid value of that organism will be 5000 and what will be its haploid value its haploid will be we will be we have to get the value of n according to the basic mathematics we will be dividing 5000 by 2 right so 5000 when it is divided by 2 we will be getting 2500 Okay, so this was the simple example, and if you have marked uh, <clears throat> it correct, right? If you thought five thousand is the correct answer, that means it is absolutely correct answer. And if you have guessed something else, then you need to watch the previous video and learn it once again. Now, if we talk about mitosis, okay? In mitosis, okay, we will be comparing. in mitosis and meiosis see the initial cells mitos in mitosis the initial cells they are diploid okay in meiosis the initial germinal cells they are also diploid in nature this point is very very important for meiosis the initial cells okay they are called as germinal epithelial cells or they are also called as meiocytes okay so all the cells initially they are always diploid in nature now in mitosis when the cell divides the cell divides into two dotted cells and after the cell division two new cells will be forming but the total number of chromosome value will remain the same that means suppose in our cell if mitosis division is taking place and our number of chromosome is 46 that means if this cell will divide it will be forming 
two daughter cells and those two daughter cells will still be having how many chromosomes 46 that means in mitotic type of cell division the number of chromosomes remains same okay very very important and this could be the difference also between mitosis and meiosis so so in mitosis what happened the number of chromosome remains same okay whatever the number of chromosome is in parents the same number of chromosome we will be getting in the offspring now how the number of chromosome is same that what we have to understand in mitotic type of cell division uh, that understanding will be in the third lecture next lecture not in this video okay <clears throat> now in meiosis if we talk about in meiosis what happens first of all many multiple time mitotic division takes place over here and if the mitosis is taking place all the cells that will be forming they will be what deployed all the cells will be forming deployed now if we take one cell okay if we take one deployed cell now the meiosis will be beginning now this cell will be dividing into two daughter cell but these daughter cells they will be having half number of chromosome that means this was deployed and the daughter cells that we are getting it is now what haploid in number and this is called as meiosis 1 okay that means if the chromosome number is 46 after meiosis 1 each cell will be having how many chromosome 23 that means 23 over here and 23 here now in this cell again meiosis 2 will be happening this was meiosis 1 now what will be taking place meiosis 2 and meiosis 2 is actually similar to mitosis not identical it is similar so in mitosis right now we have studied that the number of chromosome remains the same after division that means if the number of chromosome is 23 after the cell divides the number of chromosome will remain the same that means it is haploid 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 that means it is haploid this cell is haploid that means the daughter cells that will be forming again haploid so what will be the number of chromosome 23 23 23 and 23 so this is how the meiosis takes place okay so i hope you understood the basic concept between this mitosis and meiosis okay so now we will be discussing what's written in this uh, selena book and we'll be going step by step okay it's very easy so make sure to pay attention very very properly so i hope you understood this part if you want to understand this again make sure to go back to the video or you can take the screenshot of this screen let me zoom it for you so this can be your screenshot and you can take the screenshot of this thing also so i hope you understood so we will now begin with the study uh, of the uh, cell cycle okay so as uh, we have seen in the scope of syllabus the very first point that was written was cell cycle okay so we'll be going step by step so don't worry okay let's begin with the cell cycle cell cycle I hope you all know what is cycle or bicycle okay so in the previous class in 6 7 8 you have already learned about the hydrological cycle or water cycle right the point from where we start after completing some processes and sequences we come back to the same point from where we have start that means if the point is this after completing different different process different different process we get back at the same point and that is what a cycle means in the same way the cell is also having a cycle with multiple events in between and after completing all the events it gets back to the original position okay so to understand the cell cycle here is the diagram from selena book so we'll be starting for the cell cycle from okay just listen right now okay suppose right now in your body the cell is not dividing it is ideal now as we know that our body keeps on growing right it has to replace the new cell wherever there is wear or tear in the cells they need to be repaired 
okay so when the cells are not doing anything that means they are ideal but as soon as the repair or the replacement needs to be done the cell starts the beginning of the cell cycle begins okay and the beginning of the cell cycle begins from the very first phase of the cell cycle and that is called as interphase what it is called interphase okay so over here we have what interphase got it now this interface is divided into three parts the very first one is g1 phase then the second one is s phase and the third one is g2 phase very very important okay don't get confused that means in the interface we have g1 then s and then g2 so first of all we have to learn what happens exactly in this g1 s and g2 phase then in the next lecture we will be continuing the mitosis okay so in today's lecture in detail we are going to study that what exactly happens in g1 s and g2 now in very very short everything is written over here okay let's start from the g1 phase now see if the cell needs to divide let's understand with the help of the diagram now suppose this is the cell okay tell me it is a plant cell or animal cell guess it okay so if your answer is plant cell then it is a wrong answer okay this is a animal cell because i have only made one membrane and if it is only one membrane then it has to be a cell membrane right and if i have made one another membrane over here then it will be what cell wall and if two membranes are there it will be a plant cell but right now i have made what the animal cell okay so now see this is the size of the cell this is the nuclear membrane this is the nucleus this is the chromatin material and this is the mitochondria this is the golgi complex and many all other cell organs are there now this cell needs to be divided that means when this cell divides it has to form new cell and those new cells should be of the same size right if the volume of the this cell is x after cell division the volume of these two cells should also be x that means in interface interface is basically a preparatory phase of the cell in this interface the cell prepares itself for cell division now how it prepares we know that mitosis takes place in what the somatic cells and in each cells of a body in each cell how many chromosome are there 46 and we have already learned that during the cell division in mitosis what happens after cell division the 46 number of chromosome in each cell remains the same so in the daughter cell how many number of chromosomes will be there 46 and 46 right that means we have to maintain the number of chromosome now now if we talk about the structure suppose this is the nuclear membrane okay it is double layer nuclear membrane so i am not making double layer so just imagine that this is okay double layer nuclear membrane okay this is the nucleus now the chromosomes are scattered over here and this thread like structure what it is called if you have seen the first video or in the class 9th video if you have seen this is called what chromatin fiber and this chromatin fiber when condensed it forms what chromosomes this you already knew right so and how many chromosomes are there 46 chromosome so first of all in interface everything that is present inside the cell needs to be divided always remember in biology division and multiplication means the same okay don't get confused with mathematical multiply or divide in biology division and math, uh, division and multiplication remains the same so i will be using these words more often okay so don't get confused so 46 chromosomes are there and if we have to maintain 46 and 46 that means in between this 46 has to become what 90 Two. Now here is the catch. How they will be becoming ninety-two. Now understand this thing. 
this is what chromosome how many chromosome this is one chromosome okay this is the thing that i've already discussed in the first lecture if you have not yet watched the first lecture make sure to see it right now and then come back to this video okay so this is one chromosome now in interphase what happens this chromosome will divide but this centromere will not divide divide but this chromatid will be dividing so this is right now how many chromatid one chromatid now when the chromatid will divide it will be somewhat like this that means it is still what one chromosome but how many chromatids are there there are two chromatids okay so basically what happens this type of chromosome convert into this type of chromosome that means one chromosome with one chromatid convert into one chromosome with two chromatid so same thing is happening over here also now we have what how many chromosomes do we have 46 chromosomes okay make sure don't forget i'm repeating again and again in each cell each cell not in the whole body each cell of our body contains 46 chromosomes now see what will happen 46 chromosome how these chromosomes look like these are like this like this how many chromosomes will be there 46 now in the interface what will happen there will be duplication of the dna dna is what basically the chromosomes so what will happen this chromosome will be dividing like this into two chromatids and there will be how many 46 that means one that means 46 chromosomes and 46 chromatid but after the division of the chromosomes what will be having we will be having 46 chromosomes but 92 chromatids i hope you are understanding this basic concept okay if you understand this basic concept that means you will be enjoying the next video because it is a little bit complicated and this that i'm teaching right now these are the very basic points okay so uh, let's come back to the uh, theory part okay so first of all remember in the interface there are three phases g1 s and g2 now see what happens in the see over here it is written non-dividing phase is called the interface in interface cell do not divide but there is a replication of dna the dna from 46 becomes 92 right 46 chromatids become 92 chromatids and in the next next lecture we will be studying the dividing phase that is also called as m phase or mitotic phase now look over here in the interface what happens the two daughter cells produced from the mother cell are relatively small full size nuclear but relatively little cytoplasm these cells are said to be an interphase okay now during this phase they prepare okay so this is the preparatory phase they prepare for the next cell division and grow to the same size as of their mother cells since no change in chromosome is visible see the change in chromosome is not visible but the change happens don't get confused now because no change is visible externally right so that's why it is also called as resting phase but to be honest this is not resting phase but in reality see it's written in reality it is not true the cell is quite active okay during the interphase because the synthesis of more dna is taking place now we have the three phases here the g1 s and g2 now understand this very simple thing now see in g1 what happens there is a increment in the content of the cytoplasm okay now exclusively what happens the synthesis of rna along with the proteins takes place rna and proteins exclusively they takes place along with this what happens the cell organelle okay the cell organ like mitochondria golgi body endoplasmic reticulum lysosomes and all the other 
the cell organelle they will also multiply multiply or divide in biology it means the same that means the number of cell organelle will be doubled rna and protein synthesis keep on taking place and there will be increase in the content of cytoplasm now in the s phase s is synthesis phase and over here in the s phase what happens more dna is synthesized the chromosomes are duplicated so this point the chromosomes are duplicated this is the same point that i have explained over here okay the chromosomes are duplicated so like this the chromosomes are duplicated and in the g2 phase what happened this is the shorter growth phase in which rna and proteins necessary for cell division continue to be synthesized okay so all these things takes place you can always pause the video and read the whole content what is written now i want to uh, give you some little more detail see in interphase first it is g1 then s then it is g2 after g1 phase which phase come s phase but only those cells who needs to be divide they move from g1 phase to s phase but those cells which do not want to divide okay they do not go to s phase they go to g not phase or the quiescent stage and this quiescent stage is basically called what resting stage why because when the cell from g1 comes to the g0 phase now the cell will not divide anymore and it will become what permanent class 9th chapter number 2 tissue in the plant tissue there were two types right meristematic and permanent and permanent tissue are not capable of cell division and in the example we have sclerenchyma colenchyma parenchyma xylem and phloem so this is what the permanent tissue i mean in the animal cell if we talk about us the cells which undergo g0 uh, stage in in our body that do not divide further they are the nerve cells okay the neurons a structural and functional unit of nervous system the nerve cell once they go to the g0 stage they do not divide anymore there is heart cells also heart cells also do not divide and along with the permanent okay so that's why over here if you take a look at this diagram the g1 phase if it is going to the s phase then the synthesis will continue but if it is not going then it is going where in the resting phase where the cell will not divide i hope you understood and in the g2 phase what will happen more rna and protein synthesis will be continuing to take place and some proteins will also be forming proteins like tubulin okay and many other proteins that are needed for the formation of spindle fiber now what is a spindle fiber in the next video we will be discussing okay so uh, the video is still not finished so don't just leave the video okay you can always pause and you can read the content later so everything is written over here everything is there you can read it out okay now i want to discuss this same content from sarita garwal book also so that you can understand very very properly now if we take a look in or uh, in the sarita garwal book the same diagram is there in the interface g1 phase is there then we have the s phase then we have the g2 phase okay so this thing we have already discussed now see after g2 phase comes the m phase that is the mitotic phase this we will be discussing in the next video okay and after that what will happen two daughter cells will form and these daughter cells will again come to the interface okay so this is how the cell cycle keeps on going you can pause the video take a screenshot and read it later okay some basic gk points are over there that plants do not have central and all the things you can pause the video and read now in the in the interface some points are written this is the active phase it is also the preparatory phase it is divided into g1 s and g2 but if after the cell from the g1 wants to be permanent it goes to the g0 phase g means gap 
and some book also says growth phase i guess in selena growth is written okay so size of rna protein enzyme and everything takes place you can pause the video take the screenshot there is no dna synthesis now in g1 phase many things are written uh, see uh, we have uh, learned in selena book in g1 rna formation takes place right synthesis and in class 9 we have studied that there are three types of rna are ribosomal messenger and transfer okay ribosome synthesis protein factory this is then uh, at this stage one of the two path is taken some cell withdraw and go to the resting phase and what is that resting phase that is g0 phase they have given the symbol r and the other continue to divide in s phase replication of dna takes place very very important replication of dna means what that the chromosomes are getting replicated or duplicated okay making the xerox of the chromosome that basically means duplicate or replicated over here and more things are written see each chromosome is in the form of two chromatid okay don't forget i have already shown the diagram okay so what happens in interphase there are 46 cro chromosomes but there are now 92 chromatids okay so i'm not writing these words properly i hope you will understand chromosomes chromatids and in the g phase okay again rna protein synthesis taking place centriole replicates okay this is the point in selena it is not written plant do not have centriole so if they do not have centriole what do they have they have what polar caps okay polar caps they are originated from mtoc microtubular organizing center this you will be studying in higher classes mitotic spindle and ester rays begin to form okay this we will be discussing in the next video in detail energy store increases increase metabolic state so all these basic things are written you can always pause the video and take the screenshot okay so i hope you have already taken you can click right now and you can click again right now okay so this was it for today's video i hope uh, you have understood each and every single detail see i am discussing this chapter in very very detail and and i am not leaving anything okay so if you are watching this video properly second by second with full focus then only you will be understanding properly okay so make sure to watch the previous video if you have not yet watched and i hope if you have watched this video till here make sure to hit the subscribe button if you are watching this on youtube and make sure that to give a thumbs up to this video and because you give thumbs up and you subscribe my motivation keep on increasing to make beautiful content for you people out there so and make sure to share this video with your class 10th friends and relatives okay so this is the goodbye then and the next video will be coming very very soon maybe tomorrow or day after tomorrow so i hope you all are enjoying the lockdown period watching movies doing fun playing ludo carrom board or whatever the games you are playing with your relatives your brother father whoever don't forget to study make sure that you keep the study constant because as soon as the lockdown will get over you will be having a lot of pressure to study so don't waste time enjoy the life this is what you have to do right now enjoy it properly but don't forget to study make sure to study regularly every day at least study 2 hours every day and rest of the time you can enjoy your life okay so wish you very very good luck and goodbye